Good day everyone. I am Jason C. Salago. Welcome to Chapter 1 of Soil and Water Conservation course. I am so excited to discuss to you the definitions of terms, the importance of soil and water conservation to agroforestry and watershed management, and the historical perspective of conservation. So bear ready because after this discussion, we will be having an examination. So now let's discuss with the definition of terms. Let's start with the soils. What is soils? According to Kulay, aka in 1993, soil is the collection of natural bodies occupying the portions of the earth's surface possessing properties due to the integrated effects of climate and living matter. Action upon parent material as conditioned by relief over a period of time. So according to Cosico WC in 2005, Soils is a mixture of organic and inorganic materials which develop on the earth's surface through withering processes. It serves as a medium for plant growth. Withering processes is an action of rain, frost, heat, and wind that brooks the rock into smaller pieces. So as time goes by, the tiny plants and green moss will grow in that area. So pag matay na, na sila, it will be added into the, into the soil as an organic matter. Okay. Water. In chemistry, um, water is composed of two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen that is connected with covalent bands. So water is a liquid at ambient condition but it often coexists on Earth with its solid state, ice and gaseous states like water vapor and steams. Water also exists in a liquid crystal state near hydrophilic surfaces. So Water is a, nut is a number one nutrient needed by plants and animals for their growth and development. So even us, the human beings, needs the water for survival. So it is very essential. So conservation. Conservation is a careful utilization or wise utilization of natural resources in order to prevent the depletion. So as you can see, so the community do the intercropping to provide more food and income security. So the trees provide biodiversity. So naatay different rooting system. Naatay leguminous crops that is very good sa soil because of its characteristics. Na naasya nitrogen fixing bacteria and that is collectively known as rhizobia. Then, naatay shrubs, which is the banana, and trees. So, communities also have the nutrient-dense food for communities. So, maunin siya, agricultural crops. So, utilize kidney niya og maayo ang area. Naasya trees and agricultural crops para mas create o greater or increased production. Management, administration of business, the organizing and controlling of the affairs of the business or a particular sector of a business. So managers as a group. Managers and employers considered collectively especially the directors and executives of a business or organization. Handling of something successfully, the act of handling or controlling something successfully. Skillful in handling or using something, the skillful handling are used for something such as resources. So management all in all is an organizing, controlling, and skillful handling of something. Uplands are hilly to mountainous landscape with 18% slope or greater, including the tableland and plateaus laying at higher elevations which are not normally suited to wheat rice unless some form of terracing and groundwater exist. These are mainly classified as public lands. So Kung maingon tag-uplands, so kanan na siyang bukid. So makita ninyo dira ah, nga nag, nanay, nag, naghimo sila o oh, contour farming. So later, ato nag discuss what is contour farming. So agroforestry is a land management system incorporating crop production with tree and or livestock production, including the processing, packaging, and marketing of these products. It has in, evolved as one of the promoted tools for sustainable development in the uplands. According to Anthony Yang in 1989, 
Agroforestry for Soil and Water Conservation, CAP International and ICRAC. It is a collective name for the land use system in which woody perennials like trees and shrubs are grown in association with the herbaceous plants like crops and pastures and or livestock in a spatial arrangement, a rotation or both, and in which there are both ecological and economic interactions between the tree and the non-tree components of the system. Kung maingon tag agroforestry, it is a combination of agriculture and forestry in one area, and it is very useful nga land management because nowadays, human population increased and the demands of food and shelter also increased. Soil and Water Conservation Farming It is a farming method which helps reduce soil degradation in terms of reducing soil erosion and maintaining soil nutrients, improving soil structure, water quality, water quantity, and biological diversity. For example of conservation farming, farming crop rotation, stable mulching, cover cropping, and many others. We will be discussing it later on. The second topic is all about the importance of soil and water conservation to agroforestry and watershed management. The significance of soil and water conservation to agroforestry. In soil conservation, on-farms impacts or the conservation of essential soil nutrients resulting to less or no fertilizer input. Kaya pwede man tamo apply o crop rotation. For example, magtanong tao ko kumber, nga na sa first cropping. So, ka na siya nga crops, is taga intake na siya o nutrients sa soil. So, after harvesting, pwede na nato siya alis dan o string beans, which is a leguminous crops that have the nitrogen-fixing bacteria. So, naga hatag siya og nutrients sa soil. So, dili na ta mga nahanglan og dak dako or magkataas pa nga, nga needs sa fertilizer, kay na naman tay techniques kung saan na to siya pag pamaagi nga dili na ta kayo mo gamit og fertilizer. So, na ato ang leguminous crops. Ato lang na siyang erotate. Second, higher crop yield. By doing intercropping and mold or multiple cropping, pwede na to nga mas madaghan ang atong production sa kana nga area. Ito lang nang i-discuss kung unsay kalahian anang duha later on. Offsite impact of soil conservation. So, naay ang reduction of water pollution, reduction of siltation and sedimentation of dams and reservoirs, reduction of damage to lowland agriculture and coral reef. Kay magamit naman ta og gabions, mga other strategies nga para makonserve nato ang atong soil nga maiwasan nato ang erosion. Water conservation on farm impacts. First, improve hydrology of upland farms, reduction of water loss via runoff, stable soil moisture for agroforestry crops. Increase ability of soil to conserve water, increase water yield potential. Both small and large scale vegetables and crop farms rely on adequate water throughout the life and growth stages of the plants. By doing water conservation, for example, drainage canals, it provides soil moisture that is good for the crops planted in the area. Kung makabisit mo sa agroforestry farms, na ay mga drainage canal nga gihimo na dito ah. And it is very useful sa mga farmers and practicumers because it helps increase the ability of soil to conserve water. Off-site impacts. Reduce frequency of flooding during rainy season and drought during dry season. Stable water supply for domestic consumption and irrigation. Reduce electric power interruption. So, conserving water can help elevate the effects of water shortages in the community, just like having dams. Conserving water also keeps water pure and clean while protecting the environment. And now, let us proceed to the last topic in Chapter 1, the historical perspective of conservation policies. Current legislations. Philippine Constitution, the state is mandated to protect and advance the right of the people to a balanced and healthful ecology, 
in accord with the rhythm and harmony of nature. In keeping with this mandate, and in an effort to stop the further destruction of out watersheds. The government enacted several laws and adopted some policies according to Peralta in 1989. The general policies of the state on watersheds as mandated in the 1986 Philippine Constitution are the following. Article 12, Section 2. All lands of the public domain, water, forest, or timber, and other natural resources are owned by the state. As a consequence, our watersheds, which are categorized as forest land, can be explored, developed, and utilized only under the full control and supervision of the state. So, masabta naman guru na to, no? Nga nakasaad sa atong Philippine Constitution, nga, na, nga ang tanang pa- property sa state, dili pwedeng hilabtan o ibaligya ni kinsaman, except sa agricultural land. Dapat under sa monitoring or control sa state, ang paggamit or pagpa-improve sa atong likas na yaman. Natay mga departamento nga naka-sign, for example, natay Department of Agriculture para sa agricultural areas and DENR for forest lands. Artic- Article 12, Section 3. Under this provision, lands of the public domains are classified into agricultural, forest or timber, mineral lands and national parks. Of these four land categories, only agricultural lands may be alienated to a private ownership. The significance of this provision is that Philippine watersheds being forest lands cannot lawfully be alienated to a private ownership and hence they remain the property of the state. Nakasaad dari nga naatay four land categories, the agricultural land, forest or timber land, mineral land, and national parks. Kiimpasas aning article nga ang agricultural land lang ang pwede mahimong private ownership but with many prohibition. The watershed areas is belong sa forest lands so dili ni siya pwede mahimong privately owned kay under manisha sa state. So article 12 section 4. This provision impliedly recognizes the problem of destruction facing watersheds in the Philippines. It enjoins Congress to provide measures to prohibit lagging in endangered forest and watershed areas. So in this article, our lawmaking body which is the Congress shall provide measures to prohibit lagging labi na sa mga watershed area o sa mga forest land nga naanay mga endangered trees. Related laws and regulations. The Presidential Decree 1067 or known as the Water Code of the Philippines. The primary objective of this decree is to protect and conserve the water resources of the Philippines. Dili na nako ni i-elaborate kay natakod naman ni sa inyong agroforestry governance. Second, the National Crisis and Executive Order number no. 222 of 1994. So it is all about establishing committee on water conservation and demand management. So Executive Order number no. 192 in 1987. It's all about providing for the re- reorganization of DEENR and, de- and renaming it as DENR. Na include rin ang mga policies, objectives ng DNR. The Philippine Mining Act of 1995 or the RA7942. It was designed to revive the mining industry and attract more foreign investment by defining the agreements for mineral exploitation and provide the requirements for acquiring it. Sa musugot tag sa dili, mining is very important o part na ni sa atong living. <coughs> Kay ug walay mining, wala sa tag gadgets and sakyanan. O daghan pang klase nga gamit nga gikan sa minerals. Mao ni atong rules as agroforesters nga ma-minimize ang damage sa mining kay di jud maikalimod nga naa environmental impact ang pagmine. The NIPAS Act or the RA7586, an act providing for the establishment and management of National Integrated Protected Area System. Agroforestry and Soil and Water Conservation and Watershed Management The total land area of the Philippines is 30 million hectares. 90% are considered watersheds according to Picard in 1999 as cited by Makandong in 2007. More than 20 million Filipinos are living in the upland areas described as ecologically fragile areas. More than 8 million hectare of the 11.10 million hectare classified as uplands 
in the country are under some kind of cultivation. According to Giang in 1998, as cited by Tasho in 2000, as cited by Bakandong in 2007. 419 river basins in the country that supply the major needs of several irrigation system, hydroelectric dams and domestic as well as industrial water system, according to Peralta in 1989. Components of watersheds, area, boundary or divide and stream or river system, according to Pickard in 1999. Watershed Typology Types River Basin Over 1,000 km, ang land occurring within 3 or more provinces and 2 or more regions. So example, the Agusan River Basin. It is one of the largest river basin in the Philippines. Its drainage area measures 10,921 km and it passes through the 3 provinces in Region 11 and Caraga. The large watershed, 500 to 1,000 km, land occurring within three or more provinces and one to two regions. Medium watershed, 100 to 500, land occurring within one to two provinces. A small watershed, 10 to 100 km, within one province and include land occurring within one or more municipalities. Micro watershed, below 10 km, fall within one municipality and include land occurring within one or at most two barangays. Watershed functions, maintenance of high quality of water, regulation of water quantity, and maintaining water sediment balance in watershed. Thank you so much everyone. I hope you learned something from this discussion. God bless you all.